We'll talk about this on the podcast today. <clears throat> but Netflix has a new special out called How to Open Up Your Mind. Have you heard of it? I've watched it all. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah. Have you not seen it? It's just incredible, uh, Dr. Dave. Yeah. And- I-, I think the heartbreaking part of that question is you can't help somebody that doesn't want to be helped. Is Usually people don't advocate for themselves because they don't feel worthy of the yeah. fixing and the help. And that's that's just the damn truth. So it, it, my, my advice would almost be to find ways to show him or her that they are worthy of it, that they do deserve it. And- I really didn't realize how bad what I was doing was affecting people until it reached I guess you'd say the outer limits of, you know, almost people that I would almost consider acquaintances, right? They weren't really friends. They were just around every once in a while. And when they were around once in a while, they look at you and God, you're a prick. And you're like, oh shit, maybe I need to take notice of this and uh, go figure it out. Um, Steve's got our next question. It makes a lot of sense that we go to you on it, Chad, but uh, he says, I never really recovered from my PTSD. So I want to talk about that first. But then he says, what else is out there besides meds and talk therapy? Um, and so the, I want to start first with, I never really recovered from the PTSD. I like the way that Dr. Davis explained this week after week after week after week, which is it's on your permanent record. So get, you know, get over this idea that you're going to ever, that it's going away and it's never going to, you know, creep back into your life on, on some levels. People could probably argue both sides of, you know, again, me do, doing ketamine, um, but I always say it's it's really hard to argue with someone that's gone through the process and knows how they were prior and where they are now. And I'm one of those individuals. It's it literally ketamine saved my life. And here's one more option. The ice plunge, which Dr. Yes. Dave just did last <laughs> week, man. All right. This is a tough question. Jack hit us up and he said, my problem has always been civilian life and how unstructured yeah. it is. What kinds of things can I do that have a similar structure to military life? Um, so if you if you start off um, at 18 in the military and the structure is presented to you and let's say you even do a, a, a career um, and you get out in your 40s or so, that's all you you've known up until that point. Okay, so I, I could go work a gun range. I could go be a mercenary. I could go maybe be a bodyguard when I got out. Other than that, like I got no skill sets. And I know when I got out it was here's your duffel bag go buy your own plane ticket and there's the front gate right i got i got a ride to the airport from one of my buddies flew home to montana and i sat on my mom's couch for probably two months i didn't know what the hell to do you know in my experience dealing with folks with ptsd is they can't work a traditional job the structure of it just doesn't work for them no nope. as you get to know yourself better you can start to think about what type of environment helps to support what you need. So, I mean, I I think changing the environment, getting away from toxic people, understanding what those triggers were. And I I started looking at that, you know, and when I would get into work, I could feel my body almost like change, like clay, something else was being molded. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, it felt gross. And I was like, I got to get out of this. Like it just- You know what though? But but I want to throw this in there. And I talk about this all the time with my buddy, Chris Powell, who does more like weight loss, right? Because the conversation that I have with him is, you know, what do you do if you're trying to lose weight and your wife wants to keep eating ho-hos, right? And so, uh, you know, let's bring that into this world, right? Like, what what do you do if you're really kind of reaching for an answer, but your wife or your husband or your, you know, your mom or your dad, like, they're just kind of the vampires. Um, it's a really difficult thing to want to say, I have to walk away. I have to remove myself from my family, right now for my own sake you know he essentially told people stop comparing yourself and your trauma to other people like we all have our own stories you know he's a navy seal and has this trauma you know i'm a guy that was in the ranger battalion jumped out of a plane blew my black back out well that's still trauma to a degree and then the shit i did afterwards created more trauma so yeah and there's no substitute for going through it you know, so so if you if you can see what other people are struggling with and say, OK, well, they've they've tried this. I haven't tried this. Let me see if there's something there for me. You still have to walk through it. You still have yeah. to go through your own struggle. So so comparing doesn't get you out of anything necessarily. 